Cheers. Whatever yeah. Italian wines popped. Yes, we popped them and they are so good. Mine's a Chianti and hers is a Moscato. Moscato. Mine's better. <laughs> <laughs> Really I'm a good. white wine drinker. He likes the red wine, so that's where we're at today. Okay. So today we are making Italian pizza with a twist. Margarita so, pizza. Yes, yes. So a mar traditional Italian pizza. Yes, Italian margarita pizza with a twist, mm -hmm. though, because we don't own a brick oven stove. So we are improvising with our oven as hot as it can go. And we don't have a pizza stone either, so we're gonna use a cast iron pan. Cast iron! So. It's got a Minnesota twist on it. That's our Minnesota <laughs> twist, you guys. That's it. Cast iron Italian uh, margarita pizza is what we're making today. So, we're gonna be enjoying some wine and making this pizza. So, I hope you're hungry, and let's get started making our cast iron Italian margarita pizza. Nice. <laughs> Cheers! Cheers! Mm. Mm hmm. Yep. Excellent. Winos all day. <laughs> all right, for our Italian pizza, um, we have two parts of the recipe. We're going to make dough from scratch, and then we're going to also make our pizza sauce from scratch. So for the dough, we have um, half teaspoon of ye dry yeast, and we have two teaspoons of um, sugar, we're just using brown sugar, a teaspoon of salt, uh, one cup of warm water, and then a little bit of olive oil, bread flour for the dough. And then for the sauce, we have some uh, Cento San Marzano um, tomatoes, product of Italy, They're, they come from Italy, so that's awesome. Garlic, oregano, also a little bit of basil going to that sauce as well. And for our toppings, we're gonna do part skim milk, um, cheese, this is a nice dry cheese, cheese in the ball. It um, doesn't grease up like some of the other cheese as well. Hopefully just some more basil and a little bit of spinach. And lastly, we have a 10 inch cast iron skillet that's been used for years and has been seasoned well throughout the years. And we got our wines, of course. How can you forget the wines? So first we're gonna start with our dough. We got one cup of nice and hot water from the tap. Gonna put in our yeast. And our sugar. The recipes always have called for regular sugar, but I always have brown sugar on hand. And it's always turned out really good, so. And we're gonna mix this up. And I like to let this rest for about five minutes for it, all the little organisms to start moving around and working. Now it's been about five minutes and you see some bubbles on there. It's starting the fermentation process. So I just like to give it another quick stir. And go in with our salt. And a couple of glugs of olive oil. Mm. And then I'm gonna mix that up a little bit in there, get that salt dissolved. Now we're gonna go in with our flour. gonna start mixing it up and we'll see where we're at on consistency if we need to add more water or if we need to add more flour or if we're just right that's looking like it's almost perfect actually all the flowers hydrated okay now we get rid of the mixing spoon we get a little dry flour your hands flour it up and you can just start forming it right in the bowl. Okay, a few minutes of that. That's good enough. Pat look flour off of there and I like to kind of roll it in to a ball. Kind of got the bottom here and kind of 
and a nice dull ball then. So now what I like to do is set it aside and then we'll put it right back in this bowl but I like to clean this flour out of here and coat it with olive oil so I'm gonna do that. So now I have my bowl cleaned up and I like to rinse it under warm water so it's it's, it's warm. So we want a warm environment for the, the dough to rise. So I'll put a little olive oil in here and spread it around so when it rises it doesn't stick to the sides. And we're gonna let it rise for about an hour and then we're gonna take it out and agitate it a little bit and then we're gonna put it back in for another half an hour. Okay, put that in there. And then I'm also gonna just coat it in olive oil on the top. Get it all over. Use some of this. There it is. And if we did everything right, that should double in size. In an hour. We'll cover it. So now we are ready to make our sauce while our dough is rising. So we're gonna start by using these Cento San Marzano tomatoes. And it's kind of cool because they come from this area near the city of Pompeii. We've been here before to Naples area. So supposedly they come from there. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay, so we're gonna dump these in here. All right, now we're gonna cut our garlic up. Okay, and we'll dice these up nice and thin. Okay, now we're gonna put our garlic into our sauce. Now we're gonna add our brown sugar and our oregano. You can always add more later. Olive oil. Mm. And we're gonna steal a little basil from our fresh basil plant. Take the nice big ones that are ready to harvest. Leave the little guys alone that are trying to get there. And with these, I just like to cut them in. Get the flavor going out of them. And mix them in. Crush these with your hands if you so choose to. You could probably put them in a mixer or something, but it's just more stuff to clean, right? So they come whole like this, right? They're peeled tomatoes. And you just squish them up. If you like a really fine sauce, you could blend them, but I like to have some substance to it. Or you could buy crushed tomatoes. And that's, that's good, we got them finely chopped like that. So kind of chunky up. All right, it's been an hour now, so we're gonna open up our lid here. Look at that, that is easily doubled, maybe even tripled. No, it has triple. <laughs> it's double. <laughs> so what I like to do at this point, you can, if you want, just go ahead and use it right now. That'd be fine. But I like to give it a punch. And I like to take it out and knead it a little bit more. So I flour my cutting board. And I take the dough out. Also put a little flour on top of that too. And just like to knead it a few times. Yeah, you can just feel it's so much more bounciness now when you when you're forming it. So you kind of know it's risen well if you poke it and it pokes back. Boom. All right, so 
like to knead that just for a minute or so. And like before, get it into a nice, nice dough ball. Kind of round her up like that. Okay, so I'm gonna put this back in the same bowl now, and we're just gonna let it settle for another half hour. Like I said, you can use it right now if you want to, but I always like to let it just settle a little bit more. Okay, now we're gonna preheat our oven and we're gonna heat it to as hot as it can go. I think it's 550 on this. There it is, start. Okay, now our dough is risen for another half hour. And you can tell it's a little bigger already. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little flour again on my cutting board here. Take our dough, yet again. Some nice little bubbles in it, which is a good, good sign. Put a little flour on top of it. I'm not gonna do any more kneading, but I'm gonna cut it in half. And I'm gonna freeze half of it. We can have pizza again at night and we don't have to make dough all over again. Okay, so this is what we are gonna use for our pizza. There it is. So we're gonna form the pizza right in the cast iron skillet. So I like to just get a little warm first. It's already got a little oil in it, but put a little more olive oil in it. Before it gets too hot, I can just spread it with my fingers here. Okay, it's just been about a minute. I'm gonna take it off the heat, just so you get it nice and warm, where you can, you know, it's not hot to the touch, but it's nice and warm. So, Start by letting gravity do the work. I'll let that stretch out a little bit. Sorry folks, this is not gluten free. You gotta have those gluten strands to do the work. So okay, I'm gonna plop this in the pan. That's good. So, we're gonna bring it back to the stove. And then, I like to put it on medium heat and let it kind of rise up a little bit on the stove before we top it and put it in the oven. Now once you kind of hear it sizzling and it's kind of starting to puff up a little bit, I like to turn the heat off. It just helps to kind of cook the dough just a little bit before you put it in the oven. Okay, and then we're gonna cut our cheese up. I like to keep it in the fridge to keep it cold right until right before we're gonna cook it. I like to cut it thin so it melts up real nice. Be enough right there. Okay, so now we're ready to put our pizza sauce on. Put our cheese on. Now we're gonna get this in our oven on not all the way to the top, but pretty close to the top, second row down. And I usually put it in for about seven minutes on our oven. Could be different, just keep an eye on it. You don't want to burn the cheese. Oh, look at that. So about the five minute mark, I like to take it out and then put the spinach on top. Not a lot, that's enough. And a little more basil. Then I like to drizzle, drizzle a little bit of olive oil on top of that. Just a little, and put it in for about another minute. All right, now once those look about like that, you're ready to take it off. Mm. It's great. Now we're gonna kind of loosen up the sides here. So just kind of get it loose around the sides like so. Then we're gonna transfer it from our cast iron because it's still kind of cooking. Get it right onto our rack there. Perfect. 
So now we're gonna let it rest a few minutes before we cut it. If I cut it right now, it would be just a giant mess. And it may look a little greasy, but that's just the additional olive oil I put on top. You don't have to do that, but I just like the flavor of it. So. Okay, now we're ready to cut our pizza. Crust is nice and crispy. So when you pick it up, it won't droop. Look at that, that's the cast iron. It gives you a nice, look at that nice crust on the bottom. Mmm, the cheese melts up so nice. Let's see you guys! Cheers! Mmm. Mmm. This looks so good. We have been um, outside whitewashing and like painting our garden white all morning. So we haven't We just ate breakfast and that was it. Yeah, that's all we ate today. six o'clock. So I know, it's six o'clock. We haven't <laughs> eaten since, what, 10? Yeah. We yeah. slept in, it's Sunday, so <laughs> we slept till nine. So yeah, we didn't eat breakfast till 10, but yeah, six o'clock almost. This is well deserved. <laughs> <laughs> the crust is nice and brown on the bottom. It looks so crunchy, but yeah, it's mm. got a nice soft taste to it. It's oh my God. So good. Do you guys see that? And it doesn't droop down. It just, you know, oh. you can hold it like this. and. Mmm. Mmm. So good. Mmm. That basil. And the sauce, the tomato sauce is so awesome. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I love fresh basil. Like, the smell of it, the taste mm -hmm. of it, it's just it's my favorite. I can't mm -hmm. ever get enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I never liked wine before I went to Italy my first time. So we went out for pizza and um, we were in Italy. It was Florence, so this actually happened. And went in Rome. Yeah, <laughs> we went in Florence. <laughs> um, well, so anyways, we ordered a pizza, a margarita pizza, and um, he had gotten a glass of wine and I'm like, I just don't like wine. But I'm like, I'm in Italy, I have to try wine. So I told the guy, like I want a white wine because I really like white. It has to be sweet. He brought it out, and I like I fell in love with Moscato. that. Moscato. No, it wasn't a Moscato. Mm -hmm. No, it was um, an Italian sweet wine. I wrote it down on my phone, um, but I lost it over the years, um, which I'm bummed about because when I was in Venice this just last year. I wish I would have been able to like have that same wine again since that was the first time I've had wine that I love. So I came back to the States and I just said, like, all right, I just gotta find something I like because that was so good. And I found it here. Moscato is my favorite, so that's where it's at, which is like the sweetest wine. I'm all, I am the sweet tooth. So mm -hmm. ever since that first time to Italy is when I became a wino. <laughs> so <laughs> it's all Italy's fault. <laughs> Mmm. Wine is so good. And this pizza is so good. The first few times I made this, I used all purpose flour, but I did a little research and people say that using bread flour is better because it kind of a fluffier um, consistency and that's definitely true. Oh, it's so good. It's so much better mm -hmm. than all purpose. I wish yeah. I could get the Italian, it's like an Italian zero zero flour or something. Mm -hmm. But you can't find it anywhere around here. Tell you guys, Minnesota, we have limited options. If you're in Minneapolis, maybe, but yeah. we're hours away from here. Yeah. Do so. you see that? I don't know if you can see that in the video. Oh, the flour. Yeah, it's good. Good stuff, you guys. Yum. Italy is like one of our most favorite places. We want to get back and just kind of drive around the countryside. Mm -hmm. and Next time we go, we want to rent a car. We did a cruise when we went there originally. Mm -hmm. And then the last time we went into Venice, before another Greek Isles cruise, we stayed in Venice a few nights. Love Venice. Oh, mm -hmm. there's just, I don't think there was, a, I've, everywhere I've been in Italy, we've been all over. It's been great. Yeah. The Amalfi Coast, we've been to Florence, Naples, Rome. Pompeii. Pompeii, Pompeii was really cool. Pompeii was cool, Venice. We went to the Dolomite Mountains from Venice. That was awesome. It was cloudy, but kind of saw. Yeah, we kind of <laughs> saw them. Which, hey, can't always predict the weather, but. There's beautiful places like lakes and things there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Italy is one of our favorites. And yeah, we definitely will be going back again for a third time one mm -hmm. day. Get a car rental and just like drive around. That's our goal. Mm -hmm. So thanks you guys so much.
much for watching this little sesh of Cassie and Margarita Pizza Italian style. <laughs> of course, if you guys make this pizza, be sure to let me know down in the comments. And what are we making next week? I don't even know. We have to figure it out. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. We'll have to, you'll just have to wait to be surprised. That's where it's at. I just bit my lip. Oh, that's okay though. <laughs> <laughs> It's worth it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, you guys, we're going to wrap this up. <laughs> Keep eating our pizza. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, be sure to do so for more episodes I post weekly. And be sure to give this video a thumbs up. And we will see you guys next time. Bye bye. Cheers. Cheers. Toodles. All about the taste. I'm wearing a red t shirt like the pepperoni. Sweet, sweet nectar. Oh, I know. It's all good. I know it. Ah, no, no, no. It's simple, and our way of making this Italian pizza is with a cast iron. Cast iron, totally. Okay, so we're saying ciao. Ciao. Yeah. Okay. Ciao. Should, should we cheers? We're gonna do it. Yeah, we'll do. Like we'll start it, and then we'll do ciao, and then cheers. Yeah. Okay. We have a um. Pizza, what's it called? Brick oven pizza. Brick oven pizza, obviously. Or brick, no, that's not a brick oven pizza. It's a stove. Brick oven stove. Okay. We have ridiculously big wine glasses too, but they're awesome. <laughs> we don't know. have to say that. All right.